Hi, how are you today? Today I'm attempting my first resin beach scene piece. Um, I've been an admirer of all things beach. The resin paintings, the charcuterie boards, the dishes, the coasters, all of it. However, I knew that I didn't want to start off by doing the popular light, daytime, tropical blues and teal colors. And by chance, one day on YouTube, a video was recommended for me that happened to be an artist that was doing a resin beach diptych. However, she was using black sand and dark blacks and blues together. It was really simple looking, very elegant and beautiful. And I knew that I had to give this one a try for my first resin beach piece. So this is inspired by the channel Epoxy Diary, and I will link the video down in uh, the comments below. So I'm using a 13 by 16 and a half inch piece of half inch thick MDF board. I sanded the sides, the back, the front, cleaned it up and put a layer of tape around the underside edges. Um, the tape should peel off easily after the resin's all done. Um, by warming it up with a heat gun, it'll peel off all those resin dripsicles that collect underneath the piece. So to give myself a visual roadmap and put a, I put a priming and sealing layer on the MDF. I'm using Artist Loft Flow Acrylic in black, Liquitex Basics in turquoise, and Pibio's Ultramarine Blue. And just quickly brush it on back and forth, just blend it on. I end up letting it dry for 24 hours. And that's about all I do here. Unfortunately, I do not take my own advice mantra about using black. Black a little goes a long way and this piece ends up drying really dark. For the paint um, which is okay the primary purpose was just to prime the board and just kind of give myself an idea of where I wanted certain colors to go not that I'm using a bunch of colors but just you know this is my first piece and I just kind of wanted to take my time and have a have a plan <laughs> not that the plan ever goes according to plan but Anyways, so moving into my resin room, I leveled my board and mixed approximately 12 ounces of crystal resin. Crystal resin is my art resin of choice. Um, I end up splitting the resin into several different cups. For the sand, I'm using Ashland's black sand filler that I purchased from Michaels. I mix the sand into about four ounces of clear resin stirring it up, trying to get the resin incorporated into the sand. And I spread it out just using the craft stick and my hands. There was a lot of bubbles in this sand, but I just keep hitting it with my heat gun and my torch as I'm working on the piece and it all turns out fine. And so the first lesson that I learned in this process is I should have spread the sand thinner, uh, used less of it, and also tapered it off more along the line where it's going to meet the water. As you can see, the sand is quite um, thick and it ends up acting like a barrier for the resin that I add to the piece later on. I would have preferred it if I could have had the resin flow up and over the sand instead of just sitting at the edge of it. And so next time I'll make sure that I don't um, make it too thick and that I, you know, kind of scrape the sand up into the piece a little bit more, if that makes any sense. I do try to kind of press it down along the edges here, but I should have done a lot more of that and pressed it down and, you know, kind of spread it up into the piece. So 
so I end up using Color Passions Onyx Pearl, which is a very, very dark black charcoal color. And then because I don't want it to be completely black, I put in a little scoop of Just Paint Mermaid. And then for the blue, I'm using Just Paint Moonlight Shadow, which is a gorgeous blue. Again, I should have used predominantly the mermaid or the dark teal blue color and added just a, just a bit of black because, you know, the black overtakes it. But I am still hoping to get a little bit of, a, of that blue turquoise shift from it. I'd end up putting a little bit more in there just to try to get get a little bit more of a color to it, but so I will leave the links for crystal resin. I bought the black onyx pearl color passion from Artworks Resin Canada, and then the top cell white that I'm using for my waves. I purchased that from Resin Pigments Canada and then the Just Paint Micro Pigments obviously from Just Paint that's Petra's pigment line I will leave links for all of that in the description below so I wasn't anticipating this part being hard at all and it really wasn't I just uh, dumped the blue down and spread it out a little bit and then put the darker black I decided I needed a little bit more resin in there I do use art resins uh, resin calculator I find it to be quite generous but I would prefer to have too much resin than run out Mixing resin, you know, the crystal resin is a five minute mix time. And the five minutes always seems to go by fast, but mentally in my brain, I'm like, I don't want to mix my resin. <laughs> I don't know why. It doesn't, it's not that hard. It just, I don't know, it seems tedious to me. I think it told me to use for the 13 I think I put 13 by 17 in the calculator and I think it told me to use 16 ounces but I'm pretty sure I only mixed up about 14 ounces that big cup is 16 ounces and it's definitely not full so but I just using my hand I just spread it out and kind of mix the colors a little bit blend them I don't want to over blend them but I want to have it blended a little bit so I just kind of goof around with it swishing it back and forth, bringing the blue up into the black and some of the black down into the blue. And then I go along the edges and make sure that my edges are nice and smooth and silky with the resin. Just make sure that my finger runs along there really nicely to make sure it's covered in, in resin. Because the edges of MDF pieces are not that nice. So I always try to make sure that my paint is nice and smooth and that the resin is nice and smooth just to kind of cover up that that grain as much as possible if you're super picky about your edges you can always gesso it and sand it and prime it again and make it nice and make it nice and smooth so I asked some art friends in one of my Facebook art groups that I'm in about adding another layer and I decided that um, the consensus was to not add another layer. Um, so I go back in with my clear resin and I put down a strip of the clear resin and then I take the top cell white paste mixed with resin and I put it just behind the clear resin. This is how I've seen other people do it. 
and then I blow it out with my gun. Now I don't have any extra attachments or nozzles for my gun. I just have the standard round nozzle that's that's there. And so I wanted to make my lines a little bit more random, not quite as uniform and symmetrical as I see most a lot of beach pieces with their waves. So this is kind of like a planned chaos. I didn't want it to be... I wasn't sure how my heat gun would blow the waves out. So I wanted to purposely make it so that it was a little bit messier looking or a little bit less symmetrical, I guess. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. I do go in with another line here because I didn't feel like it was... It was bold enough. And it just takes a little bit of time to get that resin nice and soft so that the heat gun will move it. I do actually have have the setting on high. I have two settings on mine. It's a pretty basic gun. I have a low and a high. Normally I just use low to pop bubbles, but I find that I needed I found that I needed to use it on high and actually to get it to blow enough so that it's moving the resin enough to get the effect that I want that I that I was looking for. I ended up mixing mixing too much keeping too much clear resin and too much white resin. It really did not take hardly any at all like probably less than an ounce between the two of them for this size of piece anyways so I just uh, have a look at it and you know, instead of trying to make things worse, or make things better, I decide that for a first attempt, this is going to be where I leave it. I tilt it a little bit just to kind of get that resin to move and flow a little bit. I'm not adding any further waves to it. I like it the way it is. And... I'm just going to do a clear top coat on the actual water area. I don't end up putting any more resin on top of the sand. And of course the sand is quite thick, so it gives a nice little barrier for that clear resin to sit against. And I just go in and I think this was probably around six ounces that I used here and it was it was more than enough I had plenty of resin I didn't really have any left over I don't think it was pretty much just the perfect amount of resin for about two-thirds of this piece I found that the clear resin actually did help bring out some of the color and of course clear resin on top of other resin always adds really nice dimension and depth to the piece. This is why I like putting a clear coat on top of everything, whether it's a piece like this or on my coasters. I like to add that clear resin and I think it just adds so much to the piece. I might try to, you know, show the difference between doing a top coat and not doing a top coat more carefully one time in a future video but take my word for it a clear coat on top of it is is worth is worth it so I just go around the edges make sure that I have everything nice and smooth I do end up babysitting this for a little while hitting it with both my heat gun and my torch to get rid of all the bubbles and it does end up drying and curing quite nicely. So here it is. Really hard to take a video of it without reflection of everything influencing it, but 
in different light, the blue definitely comes out. The waves look great. I put a little heart in the sand down at the bottom there. I thought that was kind of a cute little thing. I'm, the inspiration video did the same thing. I have to do that too. That's really cute. The black and the blue mixed really pretty together. It, um, you know, just has nice flow to it. It's not blocky or chunky. This is black, this is blue, this is green. It all just kind of blended together nicely. And I think you can kind of see a little bit of that mermaid color more in person than it, what shows up in the video. But I'm quite happy with the colors. I think it turned out really nice. It's it's dark and moody and mysterious, and I just I just love it. I'm quite happy with it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye.